Hi, my name is Nancy McHenry and I am one of the librarians here. Today I'm going to be taking you on a virtual tour of the McCarthy Library, which is located in the 1700 building on the south side of campus. The McCarthy Library was built in 2010 and it houses a collection of about 67,000 volumes. As you enter into the library and go through the gates, you will see on your left the circulation desk and to your right some of the new books. You'll also see over to your right that there is a map of the McCarthy Library giving you more detailed directions on where things are located. And you can see that the McCarthy Library comprises primarily the first floor of the LLRC building. On the second floor, there are various services like testing and tutoring and the Teaching and Learning Center, as well as learning services. And there's some classroom and meeting rooms up there as well. As you come into the library, then you'll see on your left the circulation desk. This is where students would uh, check out materials. And here you can see uh, Steve, who is one of our um, part-time library uh, assistants. And he is at the desk. Uh, he often is uh, there in the mornings, and uh, he checks out materials. When you place a book on hold from another library, it gets put behind the circulation desk and is ready there for you. And also, a big part of what circulation does, in addition to checking out books, is that they have what's called the faculty reserves. These are uh, textbooks that are available for you. And what you would do is go up to the desk and uh, let us know the class that you're in and who the teacher is, and we'll pull the textbook for you. And you can check that out for two hours. Okay. Here's a close-up to let you see how we've set it up. So for the psych, for example, Psych 120, uh, we can see that that's taught by Harris and we would uh, pull the book for you and allow you to um, use it. You can make copies, as was said. You can read it in the library. And it really, students find that it's very helpful because it saves a lot of money on textbooks. Textbooks can be very, very expensive. Another thing that the circulation desk does is they also check out calculators for the semester. And I believe it's a $25 fee, and you get to keep the, um, the calculator for the entire semester. Also, the circulation desk is the place that you would go with a group of students, at least two or more, for a group study room. And they will check out a key to you, and uh, allow you to use the group study rooms. They're not on, under any kind of reservation system. It's kind of a first come, first serve basis. Another place at the circulation desk you'll want to find is the book return. We do have a book return located outside the front doors of the library, but you can also come in and return your books here as well. As we look over to the right side of the library, you'll see several books that are on display. These books are our new books that have come into the library, and we make them available for you so that you can see what's new, some of the latest and greatest things that uh, we've uh, purchased. Here's just a close-up of a few of those books. You'll also notice something really quite unique about our library, and that is uh, what is called the floating classroom. There is actually a, a classroom, it's room 1772, that's located above the reference desk. And it gives quite a striking picture to students coming into the library for the first time. You'll also see below uh, several uh, computers. We have a mixture of both PC and Macs and they're available throughout the library. You can just go up to any computer, doesn't require a reservation, and sit down and uh, do your assignments. Here we've got a close-up of some students using some of the PCs. And
And this is a close-up of the Max. They're all connected to the print center. So they're connected, um, hardwired through the network to our campus print center. So that means that you can print from any of these computers. So it's a really good idea to bring with you a thumb drive. Or you can also email documents to yourself and print them. Here's another view looking at the Max. OK, so we do have a print and copy center. It's in the glass room. And when you go into the glass room, you'll see that uh, you have the option of buying a, a GoPrint card for a dollar. That gives you 50 cents worth of printing, 10 cents a page. And you can increase the value of your GoPrint card so that you don't have to buy another GoPrint card. You can just continue to use that and add money to it. This is the black and white print station. And you'll see on the right, there is a screen and a mouse. And what you would do is you would, uh, when you're printing from a computer station in the library, you would make note of the um, number of the computer station. And then you would go to the Go Print Center and take the mouse and click on the number of your computer station. And it'll tell you how much money to put into the Go Print. Or you can just use your card insert your card and it will deduct money. So it's 10 cents a page for black and white and it's a dollar per page for color. Okay, again we're looking at the um, floating classroom. Right underneath the floating classroom is the reference center and this is where I sit as well as my colleague Stephanie Gross who's the other faculty librarian. We're here to help you to uh, find information, whether it be online or book sources. We can point you to some of the best sources, and we can help you with your research. So this is a good place to come when you're feeling stuck or if you just want some assistance. This is myself. My name, again, is Nancy McHenry. And Stephanie Gross is our other faculty librarian. We both have master's degrees in library and information science. And again, this is where you'll find us. So um, right next to the reference section are the reference books. And you'll see that these shelves have um, the designation R for reference. These books do not circulate. They're always available to you 24 hours a day seven days a week. Well, the library certainly isn't open all of that time, but these books never leave the library. They're made available so that you can always use them. And here you'll find encyclopedia sets, you'll find almanacs, you'll find handbooks. There's all kinds of great print sources that uh, the librarians can help you to locate on a topic. There's actually um, encyclopedia sets on various topics. Here's an example of a four-volume encyclopedia set on the Victorian era. And here is a four-volume set of encyclopedias on the American Civil War. These are very, very helpful for in-depth research, and uh, they're a great source to go to, much better than Wikipedia. We also have some periodicals, not a great number of them, but um, a few that are available to students if you'd like to come on in and take a look and see what we have. I'll tell you a tip. Uh, if you uh, lift up the periodical cases, uh, if you grab the shelving, you'll find back issues located underneath. So if we have the month of September on display, you can usually find the month of August as well as July and June underneath. We also have several newspapers from American Canyon, the Napa Register, the St. Helena Star, the Weekly Calistogan. So if you'd like to come in in the morning and read the local news in print, this would be a good place to come. OK. Um, we're looking at a picture of the circulating shelves. We have, as I mentioned, about 67,000 books that are available to you. The circulating books can be checked out for two weeks. 
You need to get a library card. You can get one for free at the circulation desk. You can also use a SNAP library card from Solano and Napa counties. Now at the very back of the library, you'll see that the circulating books continue in the 900s. So this is where the, um, the history books are. Okay. And you can see history as well as geography books. You can find world history, U.S. history books in the 900s. We also have a special viticulture collection. We have a viticulture and enology program here at the college. So we have a collection which we purchased from Copia when um, Copia was closing. So quite a few viticulture books. You can see them here on the shelves. Notice that the call number starts with V and then the number uh, is given. So that lets us know that they're part of our viticulture collection. We also have the California collection. These are California history books that were donated to us. And um, this is a great local history collection. We encourage you to um, take a look at those as well. And the call numbers on all of these books start with CAL for the California collection. This is a good overview from the top floor of the Teaching Learning Center looking out uh, at the floating classroom. And you can see all the book stacks below. Gives a pretty good, pretty good bird's eye view. Here's another picture showing some study areas. The library has some great places to study with great natural light. And um, students just seem to flock here which is great. We love to see the library busy. This is a quiet room that's located on the east side of the library that anybody can come in. There are some comfortable chairs and there's also some stations. You can bring your laptop and look out on some beautiful vineyards and do some quiet studying if you'd like. This is a um, media viewing room. We have uh, about three media viewing rooms available. They have LCD um, capabilities, actually televisions, and you can see the computer here. You can come in with a small group. You can uh, watch a DVD and or have a discussion in these media rooms. Students seem to um, use them quite a bit, and uh, we're very happy that we can make this service available to our students. This is a group study room. You can also see that there is a television screen and it's also uh, got a whiteboard. So when you check out a key for a group study room, you're usually given some whiteboard pens as well as an eraser. And again, these rooms are not reserved. It's a first come first serve basis and you need more than one person to uh, use a study room. In the back part of the library, we have room 1738. This is uh, a classroom. You may find that you have a class in here sometime. And it can seat, I believe, about 30 students. Toward the very back of the library, you'll find some comfortable chairs. And you'll also find um, a place where we keep some of the atlases there. But this is the location of the um, Special Collections Room, Room 1741. And uh, we keep some local history books in here that were donated by David Wheatley. It's called the David Wheatley Collection. It's also a wonderful meeting room that we have um, available to, um, to faculty and to student groups on occasion. And uh, you can see that in the back uh, behind the glass cases are uh, some of our rare California history books. We can make these available to students and to scholars who would like to use them by appointment. Okay, we're coming back out uh, from the back of the library past the reference section. We can see here on our left uh, reference 400, that's the language section. And we're looking out uh, and headed toward the front of the library. And we're headed back out past the circulation desk and uh, 
to the front of the library. The library is open 7.30 to 8 p.m. Monday through Thursdays and from 7.30 to noon on Fridays. We are closed on Fridays and Saturdays. So I hope that uh, that has given you a, a little bit of a view of what the library has to offer. We encourage you to come and get to know your campus library. Please come and introduce yourself and we are more than happy to help you with your research needs. Okay, take care.